According to a recent Wallet Hub survey, Oklahoma ranks 20th in the nation in the giving of our time, volunteer work, and 32nd in charitable giving. I'd rank us higher in both categories, but certainly this year is more challenging than most. How are Oklahoma charities coping with the COVID pandemic, and how is it affecting their donations? That's the subject of this week's in-depth discussion with Susan Caddo and the leaders of local organizations. Thank you, Rich. I'm here with four very special guests who have taken time out of a busy week uh, to, to share their insights with us on Thanksgiving, emphasis on giving this holiday season. First, I would like to welcome Joe Dorman, who is CEO of the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. Thank you for waving. Uh, Nancy Anthony, who is president of the Oklahoma City Community Foundation. Uh, Stacy Dykstra, who is CEO of the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma. And Stephen Steve Ellis, who is the area commander of the Salvation Army of Central Oklahoma. Thank you to all of you for being with us today. I would like to get started by having each of you uh, share a little bit with our viewers about your organization. And Joe, let's start with you. Tell us about your group. I'm with the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. We were formed in 1983 to be the voice for Oklahoma's children in regards to state policy. So we work at the state capitol monitoring the issues that go through the legislative process or what agencies do. A few years ago, we had the opportunity to take over a program that partnered with DHS called OK Foster Wishes, which is one of those direct service programs which we've assisted to try and help improve the lives of children across the state. All right, Nancy, let's move over to you. Tell us a little bit about your organization. Well, the Community Foundation uh, has a little bit different role in that we don't do very much direct service, but we do work with a lot of donors. So what we try to do is facilitate donor giving in Oklahoma City by making it easy and efficient for donors to make contributions that, that they can help then direct out to organizations and support causes that they're really interested in. So I'd say we are a facilitator for donors to try to make sure as much money gets out into the community as possible. All right, uh, Stacy, tell us about the food bank. Thank you for the opportunity. But this is more helpful than you'll ever know, just to get the word out that there are things people can do to help. The Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma, um, we are a hunger relief organization, and we have wonderful partners partners at the community level in the 53 counties in western and uh, central Oklahoma that we work with to make sure people get food. And Commander Ellis, tell us about the Salvation Army's work. Salvation Army in central Oklahoma is busy helping people, connecting people with personal disasters and sometimes the big ones with uh, food, shelter, and hope year-round and some special things during the holiday season. All right, let's 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 talk about the holiday season. Nonprofits uh, can certainly be challenging in a normal year, but in 2020, we can only imagine what it's like uh, to try to, to raise money. What are your challenges that you face this year? And um, what are you doing different to counteract those challenges? Joe, let's start with you. Well, as I mentioned, OK Foster Wishes is the program that we work on the most over the holidays. With the COVID-19 pandemic and what we're facing, that drastically has changed our work. Normally, we will have wish lists to send out to individuals, and those uh, donors will purchase the items, drop them off, or mail them to us, and then we will coordinate in a warehouse and have DHS workers from a local county pick that up and deliver to the foster families. Unfortunately, we've had to scrap that entire process completely. DHS wants to protect their workers, and we certainly want to make sure that those families are protected as well. So this year, DHS has asked us to help raise the money or collect gift cards to mail to the families so they can purchase the items either locally or online through Amazon. So we've been raising money or collecting those credit card gift cards so those can be sent out. It, it certainly has put a huge damper on what we would like to see for the holidays, but the trade-off, we want to make certain that people are happy and healthy and get to celebrate the holidays in a healthy manner. Stacey, how are you handling uh, 2020 challenges at the food bank? Um, you know, safety obviously is of the utmost um, concern to us because we're distributing food and we wanna make sure people get their food and stay healthy and the food is safe as well. 
And um, fortunately, we have amazing partners. Um, so in our 53 counties, our community partners have transitioned to a, a drive-through distribution so that we can keep everybody safe and the food safe and get it uh, into people's cars and get it home to them. We also partner with Embark to deliver food to seniors that are homebound. So um, lots of really neat partnerships and creative, you know, just putting everybody's creative minds together to figure out how we best serve. There is, we are seeing a really large increase in the need, about a 30% increase. So just trying to meet that need. Well, as there's an increase in the need, is there a, a drop in donations? Commander Ellis, what are you seeing at the Salvation Army? A couple of food resource centers that we operate, you know, we're one of those channels that uh, that food is going through. We have, we still have wonderful volunteers coming in. Uh, they're spread out. We've got uh, ultraviolet sea lights uh, that help to protect against transmission. We have uh, a fellow who's in here five days a week, and his job is to spray down those grocery carts after they come in, and he is uh, very diligent about that. So just across the board, uh, taking those precautions in continuing to provide service out, uh, out curbside. Uh, with, the, with the Christmas gifts, uh, what we uh, used to distribute in, uh, in one day. Now we spread that over three days to, to help uh, volunteers both and as well as the recipients be able to keep spread out, keep their social distancing uh, and, uh, and continue on uh, this Christmas season. All right, Nancy, I'd like to come to you and talk about the overall question of donations in 2020. As someone who that is your focus to support these nonprofit organizations, what are you seeing as a trend for 2020? Is there a drop? Is it steady? Is it is it greater? In terms of the organ the dollars that we're actually sending out to organizations and charities in Oklahoma City, we're seeing that people being very generous with funds that they've already given here or funds that we're facilitating their gifts. So obviously that's just one source, and, and I can't be specific about uh, other other places. I will say it's really important to try to think through the whole range. While the, there's a, a significant need for what you call an immediate needs of people, food and shelter, a lot of other not-for-profit organizations that aren't necessarily involved in providing those needs are still in need of support to continue their programming because there's a lot of issues just to keep people active, to keep people in touch with with activities that they used to do, whether they're senior citizens or schools or boys and girls clubs. And so trying to continue to support those organizations is really important. So uh, have we seen a drop of not necessarily in what we're sending out the door, but I think that we really want to encourage people to continue to think about all the organizations in the community, and even ones that maybe you don't think are in the direct line of service, but they still are trying to keep afloat. Nancy, do you see that there are uh, people who, um, who who do give and make that part of their, their budgeting or their their day-to-day -day financial, month-to-month, year-to-year financial life? Are they giving more because they anticipate or see extra need during this time? The word is out not only from what is done on the, the television media, but the but not-for-profit organizations have been very aggressive in letting people know that they need support and because they're not able to do the normal fundraising activities. And as, as Joe said, the kinds of things that people used to do, they can't do in the same ways. So I think that they're conscious of that. And uh, Oklahoma is a very giving community. We have lots of people that give something, not necessarily huge amounts, but they like to participate. And there, we had the Community Foundation, we have a website called Give Smart OKC that features about 300 organizations locally. And if you're interested in knowing about something that you haven't, aren't sure about, I think you can find information about it there. Or if you're looking for organizations in a particular sector, whether it be food and shelter or, or education, you can find some information there. So there's a lot of information out there and, and people have been very generous. I mean, I think we're, we're doing the best we can, and I think we just need to, we appreciate the opportunity for programs like this that will encourage people to think about broadly about what they can give. Joe, I, I, I'd like to move to you. What is Giving Tuesday? What is it, and when does it take place? Giving Tuesday happens after the Thanksgiving weekend. You'll have Black Friday, a small, a small business Saturday, <laughs> a, a Cyber Monday, and then you have Giving <laughs> Tuesday. So it's a whole string of holidays lined up there together. And this is the opportunity for nonprofit organizations to share their message about the work that they do 
and hopefully encourage those individuals out there who are in a giving mood to give on that Tuesday and support that work. You, you will see uh, the message all throughout social media and other broadcasts showing the tremendous opportunities out there through the nonprofit sector to help uh, people's lives. Uh, there's a lot of competition on that day, but it's a great day to learn more about the different programs. Why do we give? Why do you give? I give because I believe in the mission of an organization and I'll contribute to different programs, uh, both through volunteer work and through uh, financial contributions, because not only do I believe that mission is important for that organization, but I wanna see them grow and I wanna see them thrive. And every individual out there has something that's near and dear to them of something they wanna see improve, whether it's in your local hometown with supporting an FFA program, whether it's giving to a statewide organization like Feed the Children, uh, the Regional Food Bank, uh, just the, the, the different organizations out there that support uh, uh, feeding individuals, whether it's working with a program like us that promotes advocacy and trying to improve the laws for people. Different individuals have different reasons they wanna give, and that's why it's important that individuals pick and choose their favorite and then get what they can give. Stacy, uh, how about on your end? You said there is an increased need. What would you say to folks out there who may have the means to help? It is so exciting, but we have so many generous donors. Appmex.com, with help from the Crescent Family Foundation, have donated $700,000 to match any gift that's given between now and January 15th. So, so Giving Tuesday means a lot to the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma because um, you know, a $10 gift is all of a sudden $20. And $10 per is allows us to purchase 40 meals, right? So we, we can do four meals per dollar because of our purchasing power, because of how large we are. So it is great bang for buck. And I mean, it does not matter how big or small. If everyone's doing a little, we're going to get through this together. Quickly, Stacey, I do want to ask you, how is COVID affecting your backpack uh, program for kids? Distribution looks different, but boy, we're still making a lot of backpacks and putting them out there. And we're doing some emergency boxes for our pantries for middle and high school kiddos so that they can just take them and go. So we're doing everything we can to keep getting the food out there. But we are seeing growth just like we are everywhere. Commander Ellis. What would you say to folks out there? It is, this is the season of giving, Thanksgiving. What would you say to folks out there about giving to their communities and why, why they might want to think about adding that if they don't already? I think Oklahomans are people who care about their neighbors. You see it time and time again when we recognize that there is a crisis in times of disaster and in, in other times. People rally around for each other and uh, amid all that's going on in the, in the family celebrations and and the community celebrations and the chances to get bargains. These organizations uh, at work in your community are bargains. Uh, they're, they're a chance to uh, make a difference, do what I think an, an awful lot of people want to do, which is to, to help their neighbors uh, as best they can. And there's, there's all sorts of uh, services. Uh, there's all sorts of people. There's caring people. I, I love engaging with uh, not only the folks here at the Salvation Army, uh, but across the community who are doing wonderful, creative things to make a difference. All right, this is our final question. And I'm gonna start with you, Nancy. Give us a website address or an address where people can go and make donations. Go to givesmartokc.org. That'll give you a chance to look at a number of organizations and a number of them, you can even make an online donation through that website that will connect to their website. So we want to encourage people, whether it's Giving Tuesday or any, you know, Giving December, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> is, you know, to, to give locally, to give to the organizations that you know about, to so you, you, you see the needs and, and, and local organizations, I think, are, are the ones that should really hopefully benefit by Giving Tuesday. So GiveSmartOKC.org. I love Giving December. That's a great idea. Okay, Joe, what, uh, where can folks donate for the... Um, Child advocacy, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> to support directly the OK Foster Wishes program, go, okay, go to okfosterwishes.org. And to learn more about OICA and our programming and the work we do at the Capitol, go to oica.org. And Stacy, where can they donate for you? rfbo.org, and they'll see a little button in the top right that says donate. But also, if you need help, rfbo.org backslash get help. 
will um, take you to a screen where you can just put your zip code in and it'll show you all the closest places to get food. And finally, Commander Ellis, we're used to seeing those Salvation Army kettles, but if folks are leery, where can they go to give? So you can go to SalvationArmyOKC.org and click on Ways to Help. And uh, we also uh, are out at Quail Springs Mall, at Sooner Mall, and the Salvation Army at 10th and Penn with the angel trees. There are lots of angels that uh, need to be adopted yet. And uh, so we'd, we'd welcome your uh, shopping uh, for somebody else this holiday season, along with your own shopping. All right, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us and wish you a happy holiday season. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.